David, um, let's talk about home affordability. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'm not seeing really anything tangible from any level of the government uh, to tackle this. Um, I know BC Premier Ebby has, you know, a four point plan, um, early days. Your thoughts? Uh, lipstick on a pig, quite frankly. Um, I don't. I don't see politicians doing anything serious about uh, affordability. The the problems of affordability are are uh, are multifold. We have a supply problem. Uh, we're not building enough houses. We've got record levels of immigration, and I'm a big fan of immigration, but we're not aligning immigration with housing policy, and that's a that's just a big mistake. Um, uh, the other challenge we've got is that. The provincial and federal governments are highly motivated, at least in their rhetoric, to help with housing affordability. But a lot of the um, the red tape at the municipal level is interfering, and the municipal politicians have to be reelected by their neighbors, and their neighbors don't want high rises put in next door. Um, there's been talk about offering financial incentives, uh, grants to municipalities who are more open to uh, multifamily uh, development, but it's all talk. And, um, you know, the government, the federal government makes a big deal about housing announcements. They, they, they tell you they've got a big announcement coming up and you wait four days and then you find out they've built 22 new homes in Thunder Bay. Well, that's great. But when we're, when we're allowing a million new people into our country every year, and again, big fan of immigration, um, but we have to align it with housing affordability, and until we really do that, um, all of it is all of this talk is just talk. It's and and quite frankly, I think voters at all levels um, should 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 feel angry with their governments about how badly they're dropping this file. Yeah, I I have to agree with that, um, David. You know, you you touched on the municipal um, issues as well. Development costs. Let's talk about that. I mean, it's it's out of control. And, yeah. uh, you know, I know there's a lot of finger pointing saying, oh, it's the developers that make a lot of money. Is it? Well, developers will make whatever the market will pay. I mean, we live in a, in a, in a capitalist economy where um, we want the best and brightest to be trying to maximize profitability. And I don't think pointing the finger at developers um, is the way to go. Uh, when development costs are crippling and in the past year, they've gone up 50%. Um, it's all red tape and regulations. Uh, number one, I think our our government needs uh, governments at all levels need to have an honest conversation about where our tax revenue um, is coming from. Uh, having uh, in Toronto an extra land transfer tax um, uh, is is uh, a way to get tax revenue, but higher property taxes make a lot more sense. Right now, I've read studies that say in Toronto, and I'm a I'm a homeowner, um, and I benefit from low property taxes, but um, basically, the, the land transfer taxes to buy homes are, are quite high, and development costs with builders are, are quite high because property taxes are too low. And when property taxes are low and other taxes are high, effectively, uh, renters who don't own homes are subsidizing home ownership for homeowners. And given that homeowners um, typically have uh, wealthier balance sheets because, in large part, they own homes, it seems completely backwards to me that renters should be subsidizing homeowners. And um, again, this has been an ongoing issue for a long time. Uh, a lot of finger pointing, but no, I don't think you point the finger at developers. I think ultimately they'll charge what the market will bear. And um, uh, uh, developers would defend themselves and say the the uh, the bureaucratic costs are so high that uh, by the time uh, you 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 dig down into what their what their costs are. Uh, there's there, there's a lot of uh, fat being added uh, at the at the uh, bureaucratic level before they price anything. Yeah, uh, David, we had a minute left. Um, it's funny you talk about the the tax. I mean, but our governments are, are addicted to tax revenue, right? That's part of the problem. We got a we got a huge debt problem. Um, speaking of tax, vacancy tax is it working? Banning phone, foreign ownership is it is it working or this banding solutions? Again, it was it was something that uh, politicians could talk about on the campaign trail, but the vacancy tax is having almost no impact whatsoever. For, for starters, there's a lot of outs. The most the most uh, common way foreigners buy properties is they send their kids here to go to school, and then their kids buy 
um, uh, properties to live in rather than rent, which um, uh, allows people to get around the tax. You can buy recreational properties. I mean, there are so many outs you have with the vacancy tax, and it's pretty hard to even track. Um, the irony is the, we were coming up with a national home ownership registry right about the time when the vacancy tax expires. So again, um, the, the, a lot of this is just for show and um, it dishonors the, 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 the real solutions to the problem.